microphone's hooked up. There we, look at that. Now it's picking my voice up. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is seven tools that I find absolutely essential. Some are weird, some are wacky, some are wild. Um, not really, they're all pretty much just basic tools. Uh, pretty simple stuff that most people can afford. I have only have one snap-on tool here, so don't worry, you're not gonna break the bank by getting this stuff. This is a fucking dump truck uh, rolling by, big rig, yep. Anyways, back to the important shit here, guys. So these are seven tools that I find indispensable when I'm building bikes. <clears throat> so we'll get started here. First off is length of chain. This is your regular 525 pitch chain off your VT600. Uh, you, if you have a 750, <clears throat> pretty sure it's the same thing, just different length, if I recall correctly. Uh, I saved a piece of this so that I can roll it over the top of the tire and set my fender on it. That gives me good spacing off that tire. And the reason you need that spacing is for, well, two things. One, you're going to have to adjust the chain. It's going to go backward and forward. You're going to need a little space to make that movement and adjustment when the chain stretches. Two, when you ride a bike, the tire goes from this shape to this shape. It actually, it's called tire rise. And the faster you go, the taller the tire gets. It does move a little bit. <clears throat> so you want this amount of space between the tire and the fender. So you've got a nice little gap in there. This, I find, gives the perfect, get, perfect amount of gap. Some people get hose, some people put wood in there. I find this works very well. You just get some duct tape, tape it onto the tire. It won't move. Set your tire up there, set your fender up there, and you've got perfect fender height. Speaking about the ass end of a bike, if you've ever tried to pull your axle out of the rear wheel and put a license plate bracket on, you know the struggle of fumbling for the, the spacers, one falls off and rolls under the bench, you pull it out and you don't remember which way it went. Which brings me to another really hot tip here, guys. Uh, take pictures of things before you take them apart. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, most of you guys have cell phones, so just pull the cell phone out, snap a little picture of how things were before you rip it a new one. Um, <clears throat> if you do not take pictures and you try to put things backward, you end up with serious problems. So the second tool, when you're pulling apart that rear end of your bike, you've got spacers on each side of the tire or wheel, and you have a spacer inside the wheel, and then you've got your little adjusters in your uh, axle plates. So what I do when I'm taking the axle out, if I don't want to take the whole wheel off and chain and everything, all that crap, I push the axle out with this, three quarter inch round rod. Super simple, cheap. You push it through, it holds the tire, it holds the wheel, all the spacers together in one piece in the frame. You can do your stuff, you can put your uh, license plate bracket on, push the axle in. The axle should just follow this back through the wheel. Save yourself a lot of time wondering how things go back together, don't have to do that. Save yourself the time of chasing those spacers underneath the bench or wherever the hell they go. Um, if you're doing this in a gravel driveway, that's uh, unfortunate, but um, <laughs> losing things in a gravel driveway is not fun. I've been there. Uh, the next tool, which I find extremely useful, is a 30 millimeter combination wrench. Now this is not a snap-on wrench, you don't need snap-on. Uh, if you're, it's not your job, you're just messing around with your bike. This is a 30 millimeter open end and ratcheting 12 point end wrench, combination wrench, whatever you want to call it. Um, I like this because I use the 12 point to disengage the steering nut on a Honda Shadow. They're 30 millimeter, as with actually a lot of Honda motorcycles or vehicles, their ATCs also have the same steering stem nut. But you'll break it loose with this and you can take it off easily ratcheting. That's tightening actually, but flip it now. Now you're loosening it, yeah. So this is an invaluable tool if you need to take your top clamp off, your lower clamps, uh, if you need to service your steering bearings, if you are putting a uh, Springer adapter kit on the bike, really useful tool here. The fourth thing, oh my gosh, my light just died. Well, we're gonna keep going with this video because the show must go on. So I apologize about that. If you guys have ever tried to remove your spark plugs and not had this little stock tool, if you can see that, Show everybody that little stock tool. This is a stock spark plug removal tool. It requires a 17 millimeter socket on this end. This goes down into the hole with the spark plug and breaks the spark plug loose. This also has a rubber component on the inside which grips the end of the spark plug and allows you to back it out and pull it out. Now, these are nice, they're wonderful, but do you want to carry one with you everywhere? Probably not. Uh, if you don't have one, you don't want to carry one or use one, 
you can use an 18 millimeter deep wall socket, break the spark plug loose first. Then, here's the fun part, here's my weird tool. Use my spark plug tool, yeah. Check it out. So this is a piece of 3 8 inch fuel hose. That's all it is. It's about seven inches long. And once you break the spark plug loose, you take this, push it down into the hole on the back of the spark plug and unscrew it and it comes out. Hold your spark plug. Works really well for getting that spark plug back in the bike too. Because putting it in here and trying to get it down there, there's not a lot of room once this, once this is in there. It's really easy to cross thread because this doesn't have any give. So there's no give and if you don't really have a very good mechanics feel yet, you're not well versed with how things should and shouldn't feel on your bike, this will actually twist and give a little bit if it's stuck. So that spark plug should thread in pretty easy till it stops. Once it stops, get your 18 millimeter and it helps to have a nice extension like this. Put it on your ratchet, oops, and tighten it back down. Pretty basic. Very small snap-on screwdriver. Now, if you guys don't have a local snap-on guy, uh, you could probably go online and people are selling them, I'm sure. But if you're, you see a snap-on truck, you can go in, they'll give them to you for free. It's a tiny standard or flathead screwdriver with a magnet on the back. I use this, this is probably the most used tool in my entire toolbox. The magnetized end, I can reach it and pick up little nuts or bolts that I've dropped in, in between the, the, the cylinders or wherever. Uh, the screwdriver part's really good for scraping things, uh, prying little stuff off. Um, it's got a little clip on it, so you can actually put money in there, or you can clip it on your shirt, or your hat, or whatever the hell you want. Last but not least, on the front end of your bike, if you have a VT600, if you have one of these Honda Shadows and you're trying to swap your wheel out, or service the wheel bearings, there's a gigantic hex on the right side of the bike. And it's a basically cap head axle. You're going to need a seven, I don't know if you can see this, 17 millimeter Allen. And this is an Allen socket. So this little guy is what's gonna allow you to remove that axle. A lot of questions on a daily basis, how do I get the axle off my 600? This is how, this is not super expensive. They're usually sold in sets of three. I wanna say there's a, um, 17, 15, and 6, 16 and 15, but pretty useful if you want to take that front wheel off. Now, mind you, there are two pinch bolts on the bottom of the right side of the axle where you're going to need to loosen those before that axle can start backing out. Once those are loose, then you can drop your Allen socket in there, pull the axle right out. So, everybody, these are seven tools, even though chain's not really a tool, but these are the tools that I find indispensable in my toolbox and I break them out pretty much every single build. Um, if you guys have questions or comments, please drop them below. You know how to do this YouTube thing, most of you. Uh, if you are new to YouTube and you're new to motorcycles, you're new to the whole thing of life, go ahead and like and subscribe. We really appreciate that kind of stuff. Uh, if you guys wanna follow me on Instagram, it's TJ Brutal Customs. Uh, there is a support page on that website that is chock full, I mean, It'll take you weeks to read through all of it, but it's a lot of information that I've collected over the years that I've shared with you guys. Uh, there's wiring diagrams. All the service manuals are there, downloadable for free for you guys because I know I've tried to find service manuals for years and at the time didn't have $79 to spend on a used service manual missing 26 pages. So uh, if you guys have any questions out about this or any suggestions on a video I should do next, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Do fun shit.